about you know your expectations for this defense coming into for year two with you? Well, I mean, obviously you expect uh, expect growth, improvement, more consistency. I think uh, there's no question we've developed more quality depth across the board. Um, I feel like uh, we've got a much better understanding of our personnel, what we can, what we can't do, uh, leadership ability, how have guys handle certain situations, uh, again, what we're good at, what we're not so good at, where, where we need to get better. Um, uh, you know, the things that, you know, going into fall camp, the, the issues that you need to uh, get more clarity in is our secondary in particular. And, you know, whether or not we can consistently generate a, a pass rush, you know, with four guys, you know, that's going to be imperative. That's to, to the growth of any secondary uh, experienced or not, you know, they, they you need to be able to get consistent pressure up front. And it was an issue for us the first part of the season. And when we got better that way, we played better overall as a defense. Um, but, uh, you know, there was a lot of moving and changing parts a year ago. It took us, you know, a good part of the first part of the season to, to get our front seven to play with any kind of, uh, you know, consistency and chemistry. But I think once guys had a, a good understanding of what they could do, and as we gained experience, particularly with guys up front, you know, we, you know, we solved some issues and, and got, you know, substantially better uh, when we when we improved with that, that front group, you know. But uh, uh, I'm I'm really excited about our leadership. Um, with the returning guys in our secondary, uh, you know we had the injuries last year to our, our corners and both Darius Robinson and Bashard Breeland, uh, Martin Jenkins not being able to play. Those are all guys that played, you know, quite a bit of football here, and, and uh, when we already weren't very uh, deep at that position, that really hurt us. But those guys, uh, they. They bring good leadership along with Travis Blanks and Robert Smith. I uh, really like uh, the chemistry that we have back there. And there'll be a, an influx of freshmen, as we all know, even the freshmen. Uh, you know, Jadar Johnson in that group. Uh, that uh, it's going to again. It's we're going to have to count on some of them, unfortunately. Um, but I also think that it's a, uh, there's enough talent there that you know that may not be a bad thing. And. Uh, uh, our front group, our front seven, we got great leadership uh, as well from that group. You know, Grady Jarrett, Josh Watson, Deshaun Williams, uh, those guys in particular inside, and Corey Crawford, and hopefully, uh, you know, Vic Beasley and Tavares Barnes. You know, they can also provide some leadership. They've played enough and been around here long enough, you know, that we need them to do that. Uh, if we're going to make the kind of uh, you know leap that we all want to, we know who the top four guys kind of are in that rotation. Who has a chance to knock on the door and be five and six out of, out of your group? Well, I don't know what you're saying four because I know who five are. Okay, <laughs> but uh, and I told them that at the end of spring, you know, I really feel like and, and I told Josh, told Sean, told Grady, told all the guys that. Grady Jarrett was consistent all through the year of getting better and better and better and better if you had to pick one guy. And then he went about spring practice with the same thing uh, and, and was really good. So if I had to say, if we had to play tomorrow, here's a guy that I would start in the game. You know, as far as the others, you know, Josh has done some really good things. Deshaun has done some good things. Uh, DJ Reader's done some really good things and that kind of deal. But I told him there's, there's five guys there. Rod Byers did some better things in the spring, but he's not ready for that. Pagano's a guy, you don't count on. Do you get on the field and go work? And, you know, what's he going to do? I don't know that. But of those five guys, I told them, and I told Carlos Watkins in, in recruiting, I'm recruiting you to beat those guys out. And I told him in the room, I'm recruiting Pagano to beat you out. So that's the mentality I take with them. But those five guys, we're going to compete with uh, Deshaun, uh, Josh, Grady, uh, Carlos, and uh, DJ, I feel like have earned that deal that two of those guys will start the first game. I'm not, I don't know who it's going to be. Uh, if I had to say, I'd say Grady will be one of them. Uh, whether it's Josh, whether it's DJ Reader, that's up to them, not to me.
you know, and that's that's what I try to convince them of. It's all about what they do, you know, this off season with Joey Batson, because I'm gonna sit down and listen to his old evaluation of the summer, and then we're gonna go to practice and that daily routine. Coach Sweeney tells them all the time, if you don't enjoy the grind, you don't need to play college football because what we're about to do right now, we're about to hit a grind, you know. Uh, there's no pretty girls on campus. There's not very many people there come August 1st until August 31st. So, you know, it's a grind, and they, they got to enjoy that and go to work every day, but they'll determine that. So those five guys. Then Rod Byers is a guy that we hope can – Keep coming on and bring some depth, and uh, because he's been around here long enough to do that now. And if Pagano is good enough, hey, uh, he'll play before those guys. We're not about seniority. We're going to play the best players. So uh, that's the challenge to him. It's also a challenge to the older guys that you got to keep your job.